Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and this video is on problem solving by integration and it's the last video in our integral calculus series. There are many types of problems that we could do for problem solving in integration and I've just picked one. So here we go. The rate of traffic flow represented by dn by dt vehicles per hour at an intersection is given by this function here. So it's an e function. Um, with a domain between 0 and 4, and that would be 4 hours. So just having a think about what we're dealing with here and how integration can be quite interesting, this is the rate of traffic flow. So thinking about what our actual function would be, that would be, say, an n function, n of t. Well, what do you think that n might stand for, maybe? The, the number of vehicles. So the derivative of that, is this and this is the rate so the rate of change that we've talked about so if we integrate the rate function not only will we get back to our original function which gives us the number of cars but if we work between um, so a definite integral then the area that we're calculating there will work out the number of cars that we're after at a particular time so I'll see if I, that makes a bit more sense when we do it. So the question, the first part here is how many cars pass through the intersection in the first three hours? So um, when you get one of these questions in a test or an exam, my first advice is look at how many marks it's worth and how much space is left to work it out. Because that's often an indication of if they want you to do it by hand or using technology. So if it's only a one or two mark question, you need to be using your calculators. So in the first three hours, let's graph this and see what it looks like to start with. So I've typed it in here, thinking about our view window as always. So we are interested between zero and four because this is time. So we'll start with zero. I always like to go one more so I can see a bit more on my screen. And we're talking about the number of cars here or the rate of, you know, well, the rate flowing into an intersection. So we can't have, um, well, we're not going to have any in our negative region. So let's have a look at that. Hmm. We can't see anything. I knew that was going to happen. When this happens to you, here's my advice. You may have techniques that you do. Zoom auto and it fits it there. But I never leave that window. I go and have a look at that window. Our, my y min starts at the intersection at 500. I like to take that down to zero and I know that we're not going to need um, 21 odd thousand. I'll show you what that looks like. We're more interested in this region down here so I'm actually going to zoom in on that. Instead of 20 odd thousand for this purpose I'm going to be 5,000. My scale now doesn't need to be that big. I'll go a thousand. Here we are. So the first part said um, how many cars um, enter the intersection in the first three hours? One, two, three here. So if we calculate the integral be between zero and three, there we are. So the area under there of the rate function is actually the number of cars that we're interested in. So um, I'll write that down for you because it might be a little bit hard to see. Going back here, it was how many cars passed through the intersection in the first three hours? It was 5,658.5 cars. We should probably round that. Um, Practising rounding to three significant figures, we'd have 566 cars because we can't have 0.5 of a car. Okay. Next part, two more parts. Use the rules of integration to find the number of cars passing through the intersection between t is zero and t is k. So at any um, point in time that we're interested in. So we have to do this theoretically in some ways. So the integral, so we can set that out. The function was 500 e to the 0 0.75 t of dt between zero and k that we're interested in. So let's integrate that with respect to t. So integrating an e function, you copy and paste and you put it 1 over um, this coefficient of t here. So I'm going to have 1 over 0 0.75. I've got square brackets. 
multiplied by the function 500e to the power of 0.75t, close the square brackets between k and 0. I'm going to tidy that up a little bit um, as well. Well, I'll tidy that up first. Um, this comes out to be 2000 on 3. I like to leave that as a fraction as long as possible because it keeps the exactness of the answer. The moment you round to decimals, you lose exactness. And sometimes towards the end of a question, you get asked to do something in exact form. So um, you would have to go back and, and change it. So keep fractions as long as you can. We're going to sub in now for K and zero. So 2000 on three, where you see a T, you're going to put a K. And I say that and I don't do it. And subtract off now where you see a t, you put in a zero. e to the power of, well, that'll be zero. Tidying this up, um, anything to the power of zero is one. So we're just left with that constant there. We've got 2000 on three, e to the power of 0 0.75k, take away 2000 on three. Now I know we need to use this in the next part. So you could leave it like that or tidy it up just a little bit. And there's a common factor here of this um, constant here. So 2000 on 3 is e to the power of 0 0.75k. Don't put 0. Make sure you take out the correct common factor and you're left with negative 1. So that's the answer for here. And remembering what we've got written there. Hence, estimate to the nearest minute when the 1,000th car passes through the intersection. So you might... Um, have a sense of reasonableness. So 1,000th car. Think back to part A. How many cars after three hours? It was 5,600 cars. That was after three hours. So the answer that we want here needs to be less than three to be reasonable. So that's just a good way of, of checking in your head. It says hence estimate, which means you must use what you've um, calculated before. You might be tempted to go, oh, I've got no idea how to do this question, so I'm just going to do trial and error back in graph, and I'll sit there um, trialing different numbers for the area until I get that area equaling about 1,000. Well, you can do that. However, you wouldn't get marks for this question because you didn't use hence. So what we need to do is find out when that function, well, the integral that we wrote down before, which was this, 75k take 1 is equal to 1000. So that's when the rate, um, the integral here is equal to 1000 cars. And we need to solve for k. So this is good practice on solving exponentials. So rearranging, we'll times through by 3 and divide by um, 2000. So we'd end up with 0.75k. Well, I'm going to go back to t because we're in terms of um, minutes here. Maybe I'll squiggle that one out, make it a t, is equal to, um, so 3,000 um, on 2,000, which is 3 on 2, and solving for e. e to the power of 0 0.75t, um, add 1 to the other side, we'd get 5 on 2. Now, how do you solve for that? You log both sides, do a natural log. The natural log of um, ln e is 1, and so it's the equivalent of 0.75t is equal to ln 5 on 2. Keep solving for t here. We'd have divide by, well, times by 1 on 0.75, 5 on 2. Using your calculators, we get, oh, well, no, sorry, that's our answer. So that's near... Um, the time when we're a thousand cars. However, the question asks us to the nearest minute. So that's not um, in, in terms of, you know, a time that we can understand. So that comes out to be um, 1.22, if you put that in your calculator. You cannot write 1.22 um, hours because we want it to the nearest minute. It's not one hour and 22 minutes. That's 0.22 of an hour. So you need to do some extra calculations 
and multiply that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour that comes out to be about 13 minutes so therefore um, t we have one hour hence the one and we need to add on 13 minutes so one hour is 60 plus 13 so approximately equal to 73 um, minutes so go back and read the question hence estimate to the nearest minute when the 1,000th car passes through the intersection, when time is approximately 73 minutes. Again, you could check that on your graphics calculator um, by using a lower bound of zero and an upper bound of 1.22, and it should approximately equal 1,000. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And that was the end of the integral calculus series. Thank you.